Egypt has one of the longest histories of any country, and alongside Mesopotamia was a part of the Fertile Crescent, which is considered to be one of the cradles of civilization. The most famous monuments in Egypt are the pyramids. These ancient structures still fascinate people in this day and age. The Step Pyramid of King Djoser at Saqqara is the oldest large-scale monument of stone structure in not only Egypt, but the entire world. The pyramid stands in the middle of a funerary complex, which was the first architectural project to have been built entirely out of stone. My name is Kaylee, and today we will take a look at the Step Pyramid of Djoser at Saqqara in Egypt. Around 6000 BCE, Egypt was divided in two regions, Upper Egypt in the south and Lower Egypt in the north, where the Nile forms its branches to form the Nile Delta. The names Upper and Lower come from the flow of the Nile, which starts in the highlands of East Africa and runs down towards the Mediterranean Sea. The Upper and Lower communities coexisted for more than 2000 years, remaining culturally distinct even though they maintained frequent contact through trade. The earliest known evidence of hieroglyphs appears to date from the pre-dynastic period. They found hieroglyphs on Nakata pottery vessels from 3200 BCE. The pre-dynastic Nakata culture is divided in three periods. Nakata I from 3900 BCE until 3650 BCE. Nakata II from 3650 BCE until 3300 BCE. And Nakata III from 3300 BCE until 2900 BCE, which was the last phase before the early dynastic period started. Sometimes Nakata III is referred to as Dynasty Zero, or the Proto-Dynastic Period. This period is characterized by the first hieroglyphs, the first true royal cemeteries, and the invention of sail navigation. Sail navigation was invented 2000 years earlier in the Persian Gulf, but that knowledge had not made its way to Egypt. It's also characterized by the ongoing process of political unification, which culminated in the formation of one single state. The unification of the realm is credited to Narmer. On the Narmer palette, the king is depicted on one side wearing the red crown, and on the other side he wears the white crown, therefore showing his rule over both lands. The hedjet or white crown of Upper Egypt and the deshret or red crown for Lower Egypt were put together to create the pshent, the double crown, each half representing sovereignty over one of the kingdoms. And so the first dynasty had formed. Unfortunately, there are no records from the first two dynasties that have survived. Large tombs of pharaohs have been found at Abydos and Nakada, and cemeteries at Saqqara and Helwan. These structures were mostly built of wood and mud bricks, with some small use of stone for walls and floors, and they are known as mastabas. Mastaba means house of eternity, and it was an ancient Egyptian structure in the form of a flat-roofed rectangular structure with inward-facing sloping sides, which were constructed out of mud bricks. These structures marked the burial sites of pharaohs and many highly revered Egyptians in the early dynastic period and in the Old Kingdom. Human sacrifice was practiced as a part of the funerary rituals associated with the pharaohs of the first dynasty as well. The tomb of Jer is associated with the burials of 338 individuals and numerous animal sacrifices. These people and animals were expected to assist the pharaoh in the afterlife. For unknown reasons, this practice ended around the same time the first dynasty came to an end. The second dynasty has very little to no information, besides the rulers. The last ruler of the second dynasty was Kazakemwi, so we're going straight into the third dynasty, which is marked as the first dynasty of the Old Kingdom. The first pharaoh of the Old Kingdom is Djoser, who at the time was only known by his Horus name, Necheriket, which means divine of body. Djoser was the son of Kazakemwi and his wife Nimathab and he is widely believed to be the founder of the Third Dynasty. 
Djoser was the first pharaoh to not travel between the palaces in Memphis and Tinis, but only lived at Memphis. He extended Egypt's power all the way to Aswan in the south and to the Sinai in the northeast. Djoser is mostly known for two reasons. First, he is credited with saving Egypt from a seven-year-long famine by rebuilding the Temple of Knum, the god of the Nile River source. Second, and more importantly, he is known for his funerary monument at Saqqara, which was the first to have been built of stone blocks instead of mud bricks. One of the most famous contemporaries of King Djoser was his chief official and visor, Imhotep. <laughs> He was the head for the royal shipyard and overseer of all stone works, a high priest for the sun god Ra, a physician and talented architect. Construction on the Steppe Pyramid of Djoser began in 2670 BCE and was supervised by Imhotep. It's made entirely out of limestone and it stands in the center of the funerary complex. The funerary complex is oriented in a north-south direction and it covers an area of 15 hectares. It used to be surrounded by an enclosing wall in the known form of a palace facade that included 15 doors of which 14 were symbolic and only one was the true entrance. The base of the pyramid measures 125 by 109 meters and it used to be 62 meters in height. The outside of the pyramid was once tightly covered with fine polished white limestone. The structure contains one type corridor leading to the middle of the monument, ending in a chamber in which the entrance to the tomb shaft was hidden. Beneath the step pyramid, a large maze of corridors and chamber was dug, most likely to confuse potential future grave robbers from finding the burial chamber. The burial chamber lies in the midst of the subterranean complex. A 28 meter deep shaft leads directly from the surface at the center of the pyramid down to the burial chamber. The sides of the shaft are 7 by 7 meters wide. The shaft entrance was sealed off by a granite block weighing 3.5 tons to prevent grave robbers from accessing the burial chamber. The subterranean maze contains four large galleries, each pointing to one of the cardinal directions. The East Gallery contains three limestone reliefs depicting Pharaoh Djoser during the celebrations of the Hepset ritual. The walls surrounding the reliefs contained blue faience tiles. These tiles were an allusion to the mythological underworld waters. The other three galleries remained unfinished. At the eastern side of the pyramid, close to the East Gallery, eleven tomb shafts lead straight down for approximately 30 meters before deviating in a right angle to the west. Shafts 1 to 5 were used for burials of royal family members. Shafts 6 to 11 were used as symbolic tombs for the grave goods of the royal ancestors from the 1st and 2nd dynasty. In these galleries, more than 40,000 vessels, bowls and vases were found made of a variety of different stones. Incised on these pots were the royal names of pharaohs from the first two dynasties. Among these names were Den, Semerket, Minacher and Sekemi. It's theorized that Djoser restored the original tombs of the ancestors and then sealed the grave goods in the galleries in an attempt to keep them safe. Now it's time to take a look at the rest of the funerary complex. Let's start with the wall. It covers an area of 15 hectares and it's about 10.5 meters in height and it used to be approximately 1,614 meters long. The north and south walls are 277 meters long, while the east and west walls are 544 meters long. There are 14 fake doors and the real entrance to the complex is in the eastern wall near the south corner. This entrance consists of three main colonnade areas. In classical architecture, a colonnade is a long sequence of columns joined by entablatures. An entablature is the band that lies horizontally above the columns. You first enter the narrow and low entry corridor, which is 1 meter wide and 3.6 meters in height. It's followed by an antechamber, which has two stone block walls set at an angle to resemble the shape of large open doors, which serve as an entryway into the East Hypostyle Hall. 
In ancient times, you could go to the left to a stair which presumably leads up to the top of the perimeter wall. Nowadays, you can only go straight, past the 12 sets of 6 meter high engaged columns, followed by the West Hyperstyle Hall, which houses 8 sets of 6 meter high engaged columns. And lastly, you go through the enclosed portico, which has 4 sets of engaged columns, which is the porch of the entrance. You then exit the entrance into the Great South Court. The Great South Court is directly located at the south of the pyramid. It's enclosed with the pyramid and three walls that used to be around 8.5 meters in height. In the southwest corner, the wall is interrupted with a token palace with a projecting platform that retains the same height and details of the inner wall, except for the fact that it has a frieze on top with cobras. South of the token palace, next to the exterior wall of the complex, lies the south tomb which is a near duplicate of the underground structures under the pyramid, just without the structures above ground. The south tomb has a similar vertical shaft, which replicates the dimensions as the shaft in the pyramid, but the burial vault is a lot smaller. It's 1.6 by 1.6 meters wide and only 1.3 meters in height. The inner chamber of the south tomb is tiled with the blue faience tiles in the same fashion the galleries are tiled below the pyramid. Egyptologists suggest that this burial chamber could symbolically represent the burial of the king of Upper Egypt. On the east side of the Great South Court is the Tea Temple, which is connected to the Hepset Court. Unlike most structures in Djoser's complex which were filled in with rubble, the Tea Temple had interior rooms where the pharaoh could prepare himself for rituals and ceremonies. Directly against the Tea Temple, more to the exterior walls, is the Hepset Court, it was meant to provide a space in which the pharaoh could perform the said ritual in the afterlife. Every 30 years, the living pharaoh was expected to prove his continuing vigor by chasing the sacred bull around the courtyard and catching it by the tail. It is believed that Djoser chose to do this every 3 years instead of 30. The Hepset court in the complex was conceived as a space where the pharaoh's ka, otherwise known as royal spirit, could celebrate the ritual for eternity. The court contains non-functional buildings, which are only facades, in some cases doorways were carved in the stone, which appear to be open, but it's impossible to enter any of the buildings. It is believed that these buildings housed the spirits of the visiting gods, probably in the form of statues during the ritual. At the south end of the open space is a platform, which most likely supported the royal thrones of both Upper and Lower Egypt. It is believed that the pharaoh would celebrate the end of the ceremony on this platform, wherein the gods would officially reconfirm him as pharaoh. Since only the spirits of the deceased king and gods would use this space, it is believed that Djoser would perform the ritual at the royal palace while he was still alive. On the north side, directly against the pyramid, is the mortuary temple which differs from later pyramids since they have the mortuary temples on the east side. This mortuary temple faces the North Stars, which the pharaoh wished to join in eternity. It's now badly ruined and only the entrance wall is somewhat preserved. This makes it difficult to see the ground plan of the temple. The original entrance shaft into the step pyramid can still be seen in the floor of the temple. Next to the mortuary temple is the Serdab of Djoser, a serdab is an undecorated chamber found in many pyramids that served as a chamber for the statue of the deceased individual. The serdab was a sealed chamber with a small hole to allow the soul of the deceased to move in and out freely. These holes let in the smell of the offerings presented as well. The original statue of Djoser is made from limestone and was sealed into the serdab. Nowadays, the original statue can be seen in the Cairo Museum but you can still peek through the hole of the serdab and see the replica statue of Djoser staring back at you. The main purpose of the statue was to allow for the pharaoh to manifest himself and for him to be able to see the rituals performed outside of the serdab. Egyptologists don't seem to agree on the plans for construction of the pyramid. Some Egyptologists think the pyramid was originally planned as a square mastaba and as a result of changes during construction, it eventually got the shape of a pyramid, while other Egyptologists think the pyramid was originally planned to become a pyramid. What they do agree on is that the Mastabas were the biggest influence in the creation of the step pyramid. 
The structure of the step pyramid is made of six steps and was built in six stages. Construction took approximately 19 years and started as a square mastaba. It had two phases of enlargement. The square was first enlarged proportionally in all four directions and then only in the eastern side. The east side included 11 chambers for secondary burials. The mastaba then had three mastabas stacked on top of it and it became a four-step pyramid. It was later expanded with another two mastabas on top of the existing stacked four and thus it became a six-step pyramid. Eventually it was expanded again in the north and it became the final form of the six-step rectangular pyramid we now see today. This rectangular base is on an east-west alignment. The first step of King Djoser's tomb was made from flat stones found in the area. However, the quantity of these stones was limited. This could be the reason why the amount of cement used in the base of the step pyramid is so significant. At some parts it even exceeds the quantity of building stones. In the following construction stages, new processing techniques for stone material extraction were developed. This way they could reduce the amount of cement necessary for construction. The composition of mortar was improved at the same time, as well as the quality of the stone building blocks. The pyramid was an experimental building, and therefore it was reconstructed and restored several times in antiquity and even in the last couple of centuries. The Step Pyramid of Djoser was registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979. The Step Pyramid is located in a seismically active area and therefore it gets affected by the frequent earthquakes. The Pyramid of Djoser stood strong for millennia until an earthquake of 5.8 on the Richter scale hit the area in 1992. The elaborate interior of the pyramid significantly threatened the structural integrity because the foundation was nearly decimated by the earthquake. So in the past 14 years the pyramid of Djoser underwent a massive renovation which cost the Egyptian government 6.6 .6 million US dollars. The renovation of the pyramid started back in 2006. But unfortunately they were interrupted in January 2011 for security reasons. The uprising of the Arab Spring made it unsafe to continue the much-needed work. For a little over two weeks, the country was subjected to violent protests, but after President Mubarak was overthrown, the renovations resumed. That was until November 2012, when President Morsi drafted a new constitution which led to more violent protests around the country for the duration of seven months. Eventually, on July 3, 2013, President Morsi was overthrown and almost a year later, on June 8, 2014, al-Sisi was sworn into office as President of Egypt. The country started to slowly pick up the pieces and the renovations at the Pyramid of Djoser resumed after a three-year-long hiatus. To ensure that the structure wouldn't collapse in on itself during the renovations, Airbags that were designed by structural engineer Peter James were placed throughout the most vulnerable sections inside the pyramid. Steel rods were run through the terraced steps to permanently reinforce the pyramid shape. These two fortification methods allowed the renovation team to restabilize the ceilings and corridors and they added a new lighting system and entryway for people with disabilities. This way they were able to provide some modern updates to the pyramid which made it more widely accessible. On March 5, 2020, the Pyramid of Djoser was once again open to the public. The reopening was attended by Egyptian Prime Minister Mostafa Madbouli and Antiquities and Tourism Minister Khaled El Enani, as well as foreign ambassadors. Prime Minister Madbouli stated, We are working hard to build a new Egypt and the restoration of our heritage is at the top of our priorities during a press conference held to celebrate the reopening. Visitors were then offered a chance to explore the narrow corridors and stairways with the guidance of archaeologists who pointed out the many false doorways, dead ends, extra chambers and other details designed to confuse the grave robbers. The pyramid can be visited for less than 7 US dollars per person. And with that said, you've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click the bell icon for notifications every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click the link in the description down below. And I'll make sure to see you in the next one. Not sure if you can see, but we have a visitor. I think it's better to have her in the video than have her meowing at the door.
throughout. Don't you think? Don't you think, baby? Hmm?